Hi, and welcome back to Heimler's History. In this video, we're moving on to Unit 4 in our AP World History curriculum, but we're still in the time period of 1450 to 1750. Now, in Unit 3, we were concerned about the growth and maintenance of land-based empires. But in Unit 4, our main concern is to look at how states, especially European states, established sea-based empires. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get to it. Now, if you'll remember, one of the most significant means by which land-based empires grew in Afro-Eurasia was through the means of gunpowder. But in Mar Maritime empires, they wait hard stop. Maritime, what does that word mean? You'll see it all over the curriculum, and if you don't know what it means, it will cause you endless troubles. But don't worry, I'm gonna explain it up real nice for you. Maritime just means related to the sea. Because you know, if you're on a ship, you're generally having a merry time. <laughs> Who's <laughs> with me? <laughs> just me? Okay. Whatever you do, just don't miss that meaning. So as I was saying, during this period, maritime empires didn't primarily grow because of gunpowder like the land-based empires did, but they grew because of other factors. And we'll discuss all those factors in other videos, but in this video, I just want to talk about the technology that allowed that growth to happen. Now, as you know, Europeans had long benefited from trade on the Silk Roads and the Indian Ocean. But because Muslims controlled much of the land and many of the ports that those trade routes passed through, Europeans had a very different time establishing trade on their own terms. And it was at that point that a significant question began to press itself upon the European imagination, namely, is there another way to Asia? And in order to answer that question, they started looking westward across the Atlantic Ocean. But before they could go traipsing off into the sunset, they needed new technology for their ships. Now they had learned plenty about sailing from the Greeks and the Asians and the Muslims, who at this point were advanced far beyond the Europeans. And one thing the Europeans inherited was increasingly accurate records of wind patterns. Also, they inherited increasingly detailed astronomical charts. Now, maps of the stars had been around for a long time. The Mesopotamians produced them. The ancient Chinese did as well, but over the centuries, the maps have become far more complex and detailed. Also, the Europeans inherited technologies like the astrolabe and the magnetic compass and the latine sail. The astrolabe told sailors how far north or south they were from the equator. The magnetic compass gave sailors the ability to know exactly which direction they were headed thanks to the north-south magnetic field that runs across the Earth. And the latine sail was a triangular sail that could catch wind on both sides of the ship, as opposed to the old square sails that could only catch wind from one direction. And for those ships that successfully combined square sails and lateen sails, that meant they could travel further into the ocean and therefore expand trade routes. Now let's talk about new maritime technology from two countries in particular, the Portuguese and the Dutch. The Portuguese created a new ship called a caravel. And some of the chief advantages of the caravel compared to the older technology of ships are as follows. The caravel was much smaller and therefore was highly navigable along coastlines and rivers. Not only were they small though, they were also fast. And that was because their combination of square sails and lateen sails. But despite their diminutive size, these caravels could carry metric buttloads of cargo for trade. Now let's visit our Dutch friends and see what they're up to. The Dutch invented a new ship as well, and they called theirs the Flute. And this ship was truly a game changer, and here's why. You see, most merchant ships before this time were built in such a way that if they were needed for battle in a navy, they could easily be converted into a warship. And for all sorts of reasons that aren't important here, that meant that these ships were very expensive to build and required giant crews to sail them. But when the Dutch built their fleet of flutes, they built them exclusively for trade. And that meant that they were built with much larger cargo bays and could carry much more tradable goods than before. And that also meant that they could sail these ships with much smaller crews. And that also meant that they could build these ships for about half the cost of the older kind of ships. And the result of this is that the Dutch had a growing competitive advantage in maritime trade. Now, you take all this, you throw it in a pot, baby, you got a stew going. When you pull the ladle out and taste some of that stew, what's it taste like? It tastes like the rapid expansion of European trade from 1450 to 1750. Now, I said earlier that gunpowder wasn't the primary way that these maritime empires grew, and that's true, but that doesn't mean that the Europeans did not use gunpowder. Oh, they used it. Add a little gunpowder to our stew, and the Europeans have all they need to sail fast, dominate maritime trade, and blow up copious amounts of their fellow human beings. All right, that's what you need to know for Unit 4, Topic 1 of AP World History. I'm here to help you get an A in your class and a 5 on your exam, so if that's something you're into, then click the subscribe button. If you click right here, you can support me on Patreon, and YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right here. All right, Heimler out.